Hello and welcome to Scottish Car Enthusiasts and Trains TV. And it's our Bring Back Max Power Series, then part 7, where we're continuing to look at the first edition of Max Power Magazine. This video is an, an unfortunate change to the one I was planning to do, um, just due to the reason that I never actually attended the big cars and coffee meet uh, on the day. Um, I had a change of mind at, at the last minute, so I'm just doing a bring back max power video. So we're going to start off where we where we left off at five go turbo. So this is the lowdown on buying, driving, and modifying one of the most wicked hot hatches ever made, the Renault Five Turbo. So. Two things to look out for. Number one is the engine. Turbocharger is the main worry. Faults often often caused due to lack of servicing and oil changes. How does the engine respond in the test drive? Is it snappy or limp? Any smoke coming out of the back? If so, what colour? Blue indicates the valve wear. Seals and gaskets quick to deteriorate. Also. Fuel vaporization is a common glitch, which can cause an uncool stall in traffic. Keep yourself cool by fitting a vented bonnet. And don't be afraid to test drive the car hard. That's what you'll be doing if you buy it. Number two is brakes. These will have been used often and very hard. Warped discs are a possible possibility is the car noisy or unstable when you hit the centre pedal? Parts could be worn, brake fluid may need changing, car should stop quickly, firmly and in a straight line. Number 3. Transmission. Gearbox synchromesh often damaged through over-enthusiastic over use. Fadings can rumble after a while. A warning that a new transmission will be needed. Seized or stick in clutch is another affliction. Moving on to your wheels and tyres. Kerb crunched alloys likely on the older cars. Check also for tyre damage and wear. Look for black brake dust on the rims, a sure sign the car has been driven hard. Tyre damage likely on sidewalls when the car is lowered. Number 5. <clears throat> Suspension and steering is likely to be knackered. Because it works so hard, it needed to put you off. See cunning plan. Section overleaf. Look for uneven ride height, leaking dampers, and strange grunts and groans when test driving. Sure, they're not cornering for, coming from the owner. Anti roll bars suffer from tired bushes. Torsion bar at the rear lasts a long time. Steering rack may need an overhaul on high mileage cars. 6. Bodywork. Post 86 cars are pretty sound. Minor scabs caused by stone chips. Being the biggest worry, especially common on the front valence and bonnet, but easily got rid of. Pre-86 cars rust around the door sills, rear tailgate, wheel arches and front valence. Check for crash damage, dents, paint over spray and misaligned panels or clues. And the final check is inside. Check all the gauges work, especially the one for the turbo boost pressure. Damp footwells mean underbody rust. Haggle over knackered seats, worn out carpets and missing bits of trim. Five turbos are pretty tough, so this shouldn't be a problem. It is also vital the stereo works to full effect. No sounds, no sale. So, when you're in the driving seat of a Renault 5 Turbo, um, great for straight line acceleration puts a 5 Turbo up, up there with hot shots like the GTI 16 valve Golf and Esco RS Turbo. If you can't hit 60 mile an hour in 8 seconds or less, you shouldn't be on the road. 5 Turbo isn't a high street racer. There's enough power on tap to resolve the majority of contests. Don't get carried away by your ego. 120 mile an hour is top back. Suspension is tuned to cope with wicked power delivery. Don't be put off by the skinny 13 inch wheels. About the smallest you'll see on any hot hatch. A good set of 195-55 rubber, ideally supplied by Mitchell and Pirelli or Yokohama, gives immense grip. 
watch out for the front end lift and the weight. Standard braking system is man enough to hold 5 turbo to a halt from high speed once or twice before fading. Up front are vented discs, plain ones installed at the rear. Servo assistance does nothing to dampen the brake feel. So here's the bad news on a 5 turbo. Number 1, it's been thrashed. People don't buy 5 turbos to drive a sedate 30 mile an hour to Sainsbury's. They buy them to hack around the countryside at 120 mile an hour. You buy them to see if the tyres really do come off the wheels when you corner at that speed. Engine, you want to ensure a complete service record is vital. Don't buy one without it unless it is an absolute bargain. Then ask yourself why it is a bargain. So make sure there's frequent oil changes. Because the little engine works lemon hard. You also want to check in the turbocharger is uh, not on its way out. Turbocharged cars need quality oil. Skimping on cost will wear the engine out, causing it to rattle, smoke and genuinely misbehave. A rattling time and chain and piston slap which makes the engine noisy when it's cold. Later 5 turbos suffer from fuel vaporisation caused by excessive heat under the bonnet. You know this is why you keep stalling in town. So as we said before, fit a vented bonnet. Transmission and brakes, take your battering. Now you can find it hard to match a driver's enthusiasm. And suspension wise, you're looking for leaking shock absorbers are fairly typical, as are corroded springs, worn out anti roll bars. Um, the old flat, flat out cornering has a price. Tires with tread are advantageous, as are unmarked wheels. This may be stating the obvious, but it seems some five turbo owners take a reverse delight in using the beautifully sculpted alloys as curb cleaners. If you're looking for a phase one and phase two car, the differences are phase one car is this one here with these alloys and the phase two is these alloys. The engine underneath, it's a 1397cc unit, which, which needs a good looking after. So it's turbocharged. So five five turbo tweaks you can tweak the engine with a reprogrammed microchip, which increases boost availability to 0.9 bar. Add a modified intercooler to take a boost up to one bar, increasing power to 150 brake horsepower. Cost in 1993, 195 pounds. Or go the whole way with a stage two polished imported head, devil exhaust system, coupled with a chip. Modified intercooler, you've got a power increase of uh, about 30% and cost in 1993 1157 Suspension. Low is the only way to go. Radborn will sell you shortened springs to drop the front, adjust the rear torsion bar to even the ride height out. Shocks available are from Coney and DeCarbon. The latter are for die-hard enthusiasts. They cost £153 for a set. Ponies are a better choice for daily drivers and cost £377 for all four. Strut brace will eliminate body flex under heavy cornering. Brakes, four basic improvements on offer. Step one, exchange your standard brake lines for braided steel items running with competition brake fluid. Step two is identical but with hardened brake pads, even better as a combination of Tarox pads and discs combined to eliminate brake fade. Ultimately, Radborn will remove the front fog lamps and install cooling ducts in the front bumper. Wheels and tyres. If your 5 Turbo has Michelin low profiles, keep them. Fitting larger diameter wheels will not necess necessitate the need for a wide arched body kit. Dial and FagX kits are sold via Radborn and look stunning. FagX have a split rim with and are made from aluminium, with a choice of centre spoke and disc colours. Cost in 1993 is £198 each. 
Body Cylon. Radborn says its body kit was designed to retain the basic character of the car while making it stand out from front and rear. The rear kit consists of new bumpers front and rear, front wings, sill extensions, rear quarter panels and wide arches. Cost in 1993 is £1,351. And for another 223 you can fit a vented bonnet as well. This has a purpose besides looking good, as it will keep the engine cool. So, country roads are where the Renault 5 Turbo struts its funky French stuff. It's Vanessa Paradis behind the wheel, mate. Renault 5s below are for sale and the prices vary according to the stickers on the window. Spot the ones which aren't 5 turbos and win nothing. Plan, if you're planning to modify your prospective purchase, much of the above won't matter too much because the parts mentioned will be replaced. This allows you to look at five turbos at a slightly more realistic price or to haggle in barter Tunisian style. An example being the suspension is knackered. You are planning to have fit up rated Coney shocks and springs all round, so say knock off £150 and use the cash to buy some new bits. Same applies to wheels, tyres, turbo units, seats. Shunted. Not everyone who drives a Renault 5 Turbo is able to master its controls. When faced with a sharp right hander at 90, they don't assess the information, correct the line and clip the corner at the apex like you and I do. They carry straight on and bend the bodywork instead. Most bodywork problems can easily be sorted out, but if the chassis has been twisted or the bodywork appears misaligned, steer clear. Check the gaps between doors, bonnet, tailgate and body shell. If they're inconsistent and with, chances are the car has been stuffed. If so, walk away. Paint is another giveaway. Look for overspray between panels, under the wheel arches and on tyres and check under the bonnet or underneath carpets for colours different to a majority of the car. As for rust, this isn't a real concern in post-86 cars, which were well protected, stone chipping around the bonnet and on the valence. It's common. How much do they cost? If the listening bank won't listen, the best entry-level car is a Renault 5 Giordini Turbo, the 5 Turbo's predecessor which was knocked on the head in 1983. Giordinis are dirt cheap because no one wants them. Small capacity turbocharged engines lead a Harder life in Skoda salesman, unless it's been perfectly maintained. From now, it's probable that the turbo unit and the rest of the engine will need an overhaul. So prices back in 1993, top end one 6,900, a tatty one on a Mark One, you're looking at about two and a half thousand pound. Insurance wise, um, it's not cheap, especially if you want. Full comprehensive cover, all five turbos are in groups 12 to 16. So if you're under 25, the cost could be over £1,000. The tempting route of insuring the car under your parents' name will reduce the cost, but your no claims bonus will suffer. Any modifications will have to be notified to the insurers. So let's have a wee look at the tech spec on the 5GT Turbo. So it is a Inline 4 cylinder 1397cc, bore of 76mm, stroke of 77mm, compression ratio 7.9.1, aluminium 8 valve cylinder head, Garrett T2 turbocharger with air slash air head intercooler, and pressurised Solex carburetor. Transmission is a 5 speed manual with single drive plate clutch. Suspension is at the front McPherson struts. Lower wishbones, coil springs and anti-roll bar. Rear is independent trailing arms, four torsion bar springs, incline dampers, anti-roll bar. Brakes. Fronts ventilated discs, um, rear is solid discs. Alloy wheels are 5.5 inches by 13. Max power, you're looking at 120 brake horsepower at 5,750 RPM. Max torque off. 122 pounds feet of torque at 3750. Brake horsepower per litre 85.7, power to weight ratio 
134 brake horsepower per tonne. 0 to 60, 7.8 seconds. 0 to 100, 24.7 seconds. 0 to 25 uh, mile, 16.4 seconds. Max speed of 120. This is figures from Performance Car November 1987. Insurance groups 12 to 16. And we're going to finish up on this part of Bring Back Max Power. And this was just a, a buyer's guide on the Renault 5 GT Turbo. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe at Scottish Car Enthusiasts. And we'll catch you in part 8 in due course. As always, thank you for watching and feel free to like and subscribe.